about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. When you come to him, know that he's your source. He wants to know that he's not plan A. When you call him Abba, you verbalize your total dependence on Him. Lord, I'm not coming to you as plan A that I'm trying. There is one horn or one, one, one javelin that was given to me by one, um, one native doctor to hang and watch. In case you fail me, I quickly use it to save myself from embarrassment. Let me tell you this. Do you know why God seems to show up for people at their last point? That's when they've given up on all the options. There is an attribute of God that is, unless it is taught, it looks like a very negative attribute. It's called his jealousy. Have you read that God is a jealous God? Now, jealousy is not a negative attribute. In fact, it is jealousy. Do you know that the foundation for responsibility is jealousy? You cannot be responsible over something you are not jealous about. Parents, you have a child now. The moment you hear the cry of your child, it is your jealousy that provokes you to want to say, what is that? So when the Bible says God is a jealous God, there is something in you that is connected to him. When he hears your cry, he can't pretend that it is not you. He knows the sound. father when you approach God in prayer let him be your source your everything not plan B not to drop a Bible you drop a charm a talisman and say I'm praying to a universal deity I don't insult your convictions there are people following from all over the world in as much as I respect your spiritual orientation this is a platform that advocates Jesus. So let me have the confidence to do it unashamedly. You will not listen. Listen to me. You cannot mix Jesus and a charm. Jesus and something in your pocket. Jesus. No. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him. And given him a name. That is above. every other name do you believe what i'm saying so let me advise you i know that this is africa and i don't mean to insult your pedigree i think believers we have to get to a point where we must be willing to take god seriously by folding other gods that we have a God that you carry, is that powerful enough? Many people have gone into traditional worship simply because the advocacy of prayer that had been proposed hitherto failed them. 
So don't be hard on anybody you know who is practicing Christianity and tradition. We are not here condemning. We are helping people to see that it's not necessary when you know God as Abba. Hallelujah. I look around and I see a few little children, our young ones just scattered in the congregation. And I can almost discern the extent of confidence you see those little kids. You'd come as an usher or as a protocol to bully them. They came to church with the consciousness that they are under the defense of their father. They don't care who you are, what department, that is your business and those organizing it. As far as they are concerned, my confidence, the only trouble in their life is when their fathers or their parents get up and want to walk away. That should be your true fear. If your father is not there, it is worth being afraid of. That's why Jesus rebuked them. He said, what is the fear? You are looking at the storm. Am I not in the boat? If the boat will capsize, will it throw you and leave only me? If they kept quiet, we would have read something else today. We would have read a boat that was elevating in the midst of the storm. They stopped us from seeing another dimension of God. They downgraded His power through their unbelief. Let's hurry up. Abba, Father. Number two. The second revelation about prayer. Please keep that scripture. Matthew chapter 6. We're still discussing verse 9. Matthew 6 verse 9, please. Media help us. Verse 9. Abba, Father second revelation which art in heaven look up please this means that every time you approach god your faith must be alive are we together now because he is in a domain and a realm that is higher than this three-dimensional sphere so you will need faith which art in heaven even though he's everywhere but heaven is his throne the earth is his footstool that means it will require faith the one you are communicating with is so real yet he's not visible to the optical eyes it will require faith to strengthen your conviction that even though you are talking he's listening to you what a god his feet his legs are in the earth the bible says the earth is his footstool and yet you talk whether in a whisper or in a shout he still hears which art in heaven hebrews chapter 11 when you read verse 6 hebrews 11 it says but without faith it is impossible to please god look up believers why for he that cometh to god must come with this conviction that he is that means he exists don't come hoping is he really alive jesus is alive forever he's alive amen remember that song he's alive he's alive jesus is alive forever he's alive i know that i'm serving which act in heaven your situation to say where is the god can you see him just because to build a job a relationship many of you have friends you have never seen yet you are so close to them you can feel the impulses of their emotions why are you feeling bad today and he tells you i have a bad day yet you've never seen him they that worship him was worship him in spirit and truth please someone say he's alive that means when you approach God in prayer, remember which art in heaven. He's in heaven yet he's with you. So we say he's here. An unbeliever looks at this and says, how stupid a statement. He's here? Where? Where is his chair? That's the carnal man. It's a mystery. How could he be seated on the throne, seated in my heart, and still in the room? What sort of a God is that? 
anywhere there is a throne he sits there there is a throne in heaven he sits there there is a throne in my heart he sits there when we build him a throne in this place he sits if your home builds him a throne he sits anywhere he finds a throne that means he's crown king he will come to honor you could that be why he's not found in your home you have built yourself thrones but you have not built him a throne he shall reign he shall reign he shall reign forevermore crown him king of kings crown him lord of lords listen which art in heaven means you will require faith all the time. Without faith, there are things you cannot believe. Without faith, you cannot receive. Remember the scripture I taught you, Mark 11 verse 24. What things soever ye desire, it says, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest it, and thou shalt have them. You can never have what you have not received. Receiving is a spiritual thing. I received that miracle. I received that job. And you are laughing as if you have it genuinely. And unbelievers look at you. They keep mocking till they start celebrating. Next instruction to help us with prayer. Hallowed, let's hurry up. It says, Hallowed be your name. Verse 9. Please keep verse 9. First Samuel chapter 2 and then 30. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name means in spite of his fatherhood, you must approach him with the spirit of reverence. Please look up. The revelation of the fatherhood of God can so affect us. It can get to a point in our lives where we trivialize him like many people have. So he reminds you that even though you approach him with confidence, you must approach him from a standpoint of reverence. It's called Yirat Adonai, the fear of the Lord. It's not enough to believe in God. You must reverence him. Please give us that scripture, Samuel. He said, wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that my house and the house of my father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, be it far from me. For them that honor me, look up believers, I will honor. And they that despise me, I will lightly esteem. That means not take them seriously. You must approach God with honor. This is where the balance, and, and I say this with every sense of respect. Pentecostals and Charismatics have made a big mistake and a mess of the revelation of things like the grace of God and the fatherhood of God. Because in a bid to instill confidence in people to approach God, sometimes if we are not careful, we erode away the healthy reverence to have for God. And God has a way of bringing you back to order. When you dishonor him too much, he has a way of doing something spectacular in your life that will reduce you back to say, God, I fear you. He says, now that you are back, let's continue the way it used to be. Have you seen fathers remind their children and say, hey, hey, hey it's all right. You are jumping on me, but remember, this man you are jumping on is also CEO. He's not just your father. I've allowed you to climb my neck is enough. You can climb my neck and play. You can climb my neck and do whatever. But by the time you bring spoon and say, let's eat together, and it becomes a habit, then the father says, no, this is daddy's cup. This is daddy's spoon. The child leaves feeling bad, but the father is happy because that is a balance. Otherwise, it will graduate to dishonor. One day, you will do what the mother is doing. The mother is playing with her husband, and the child will come and slap the father too. So he reminds you he did not marry you. See the balance. This is God. There is a weakness in men. Every time great men are too available, the temptation for dishonor is around the corner. So there is always a way. It's a weakness in men. It's the reason why even sociologically speaking, most great men sometimes intentionally just create that difficulty to approach them as a way of reminding you that they did not get there by mistake. When they give you access 
and they study your sense of honor or dishonor when they find out that the closer you are coming to them the more your dishonor is dropping they peg you there and you don't move forward from there maybe this is a lesson for someone to learn that may be why a door that was once open closed against you because great people gave you unusual access and the revelation of their fatherhood was there but you missed the reverence part it's a combination of lion and lamb god is not only lamb he is lion you don't play with a lion you can play with a lamb because you see a lamb that later becomes a sheep does not have horns it can't hurt you it will only depend on the safety of the shepherd but the lion will tear you into pieces god is both he is both depending on who you are let me tell you this there are sights of god that are very fearful never miss the reverence part there are times that i return maybe from a crusade or from a meeting and i see the wonder working power of god and sometimes i go down my knees and i say god almighty i not only believe you i fear you maybe god is speaking to someone who has been trivializing god you walk to him casually I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I didn't ask you to die for me. You died for me. Now listen carefully. Here are my prayer requests. We call it confidence. Number one, I'm tired of this pay scale. Raise me up. Two, I am this. And we blackmail him. And then we wrap everything up. Uh, I expect between now and the next two weeks. If you are really God. Please listen. I'm not being sarcastic. never allow your reverence for god to erode no matter how close you get to god or greatness do not ever forget that greatness still remains greatness please this is a word of caution leaders maybe this is why many great people do not invite you to their tables again they have seen that you do not know how to manage the system of greatness no matter how God, even if God comes to jump around, you know, once in a while you see him warning his disciples because they got too used to him. And say, hey, before your father Abraham, I am for that information. Don't you think you are just two years older than me, Peter? Ah, I know they killed all my age mates from two years and below. Don't you ever think we're age mates before your father Abraham was. When he resurrected in John 21, he said, little children, have you any catch? They were used to him by now. None of them say, ah, God, you are, he's the ancient of days. That means you should never be ashamed of going down on your knees. You should never be ashamed of rolling before him. He deserves it. It is not, you are not, you are not, you're not ignoring the fact that you're his righteousness. You're not even ignoring your oneness. You are balancing the revelation of his fatherhood. You are letting him know that no matter how free you are with me, oh God, you are still the God of the universe. There are young people here, let me give you a counsel. This may be the reason why many great people in your life don't pay attention to you again. They gave you access that not even their senior executives have and you trivialize it oh i can call that man's number let me put it on loudspeaker you'll see the man loves me so much when they discern that you do not know how to protect and preserve access they will withdraw it are we learning something this night hallowed be your name Boldness, according to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, should not be mistaken for pride and dishonor. Hebrews 4 and verse 16 says to come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Boldness is coming knowing that every sin and everything that can stand as a blockade 
have been gone why through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus his son now he has become a new one a living way he's given me access to the father now i come without a sense like Kenyon would define righteousness as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt inferiority nor condemnation yet in the midst of it that reverence will still be there even in heaven they still bow yes sir even in the throne room they still bow you don't find anybody just running around the throne room and say it's my father's house there is still order satan is not there yet there is still order hallowed be your name next verse verse 10 6 verse 10 thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven please look up i can spend the whole night even if this were a vigil discussing this one scripture this is jesus teaching us on prayer let's do a quick recap he says when you pray this should be your understanding that you are praying to the father you will require faith because it's in a realm that is not earthly are we together that you must approach him with the spirit of reverence and then your priority as far as the manifestation is not just your need pray that his kingdom comes you know what his kingdom is the kingdom of god look up please the kingdom of god represents the life the culture of heaven it talks about the sovereign rule of heaven finding expression that you pray that his kingdom would come how by his will being done so his kingdom only comes where his will is being done wow do you know what god's will is i wish above all things the spirit of god speaking through the apostle that he prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered that's the will of god it is not his will that any man perish but that all come into repentance let me tell you this please look up if the will of god is really done in your life you may not have a prayer request again are you seeing what he's teaching you he's saying that even though i will answer your request the reason why you still have prayer requests is because the kingdom has not truly come and his will is not yet done that if the will of god is allowed to be enforced you will not have any request again so more than the prayer requests that seem to multiply by the day pray that his influence through his will find expression in your life if the kingdom comes your life must be a replica of heaven question did you ever see any angel making a request in heaven did you ever see any four and twenty elder making a request in heaven did you ever see any of the living creatures all that happens in heaven is worship do you know why because the kingdom has found expression so if the kingdom comes to your house you will not even need to say god what about this issue of school fees the kingdom of god is not just some cloud the kingdom of god is god's will and god's intent in its entirety finding expression in your life someone say your kingdom come hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done it's a prayer hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done imagine what happens to nigeria if his kingdom comes and his will is done imagine what happens in africa if his kingdom comes and his will is done imagine what happens to your political career to your business listen let me tell you this when the kingdom of god comes upon your business don't think you'll be praying in tongues around you will see heaven in a way that will bring everyone to say what is this when the kingdom of god came and met a man inside a den of lions not even the lions could hurt him that's kingdom come 
when the kingdom of God came upon Samaria through the prophecy of one man the Bible says in 24 hours by this time tomorrow and four lepers were the instruments that were used do not trivialize you know most times when we say the kingdom come we just think evangelism so winning no kingdom come is more than just so winning kingdom come is the reality the the full span of the sphere the intense the culture the desire of the king being superimposed in a life listen to what it says it says matthew chapter 6 please give us verse 10 it says your kingdom come your will be done in earth not on earth in earth and like you've heard me say the first earth is you you are that earthen vessel so let the kingdom come in my life let the kingdom come in my business let the kingdom come in my destiny let the kingdom come in my church when you pray your kingdom come by your will being done it's a very powerful thing look at me brothers and sisters we have subliminally been taught that the will of god is always to our destruction you know most people hate saying thy will be done because they suspect that if you ever give god a chance his will will so frustrate you so when we say your will be done especially for something that we already have our own plans lord i don't know if it's your will to collect this job that cbn is just giving me but your will be done when your mind is saying god if you try it if you play with me i just got a job in cbn i'm saying your will be done so people will hear it but you too you know listen his will is what made heaven heaven if you doubt what his will can do look at heaven heaven is what happens when the will of god is not resisted I repeat heaven is what happens when his will is not resisted thy kingdom come your priority should be his kingdom when his kingdom comes drugs violence armed robbery corruption all of these things will fade away remember the bible talks about a new heaven and a new earth the old one folding like a carpet that's what happens when his kingdom comes let me tell you something if you're having problem in your workplace your company you don't just need good leaders you don't just need intelligent people what you may need truthfully speaking is his kingdom to come kingdom come is not just for the advantage of christians alone you are saying heaven and its reality let it find expression there is no recession in heaven there is no up today and down tomorrow in heaven a description of heaven is what proverbs i think chapter 4 and verse 18 i hope i'm right he says but the path of the just is as a shining light it says shining ever brighter more and more there is no better yesterday reject that thing over your life your yesterday should never be better than your tomorrow reject that kind of life that that plateaus and then you start plunging down that is the that is a a dangerous heritage that africa tries to propose to us that you rise to a point whether in ministry whether in life and they say it's your time afterwards fade away i reject it the bible says the path of the just 30 years after now we're still shining listen it is unto you according to what you believe next scripture matthew chapter 6 we're still walking it am i wasting your time give us this day <laughs> our daily bread someone shout god is a giver, god is a giver. one more time say god is a giver, god is a giver. say my bread is daily, daily. oh nigerians prophesy say my bread is daily you have shown me your monthly bread you have shown me your quarterly bread as an investor let me see your daily bread because the prayer says the nature of god's giving is that it resets after every 24 hours 
have you believed that my god is father and father is giver i have prioritized your kingdom give us this day give us this day give this family this day any man that cannot provide for his family the bible says he has denied the faith are we bible students and he's worse than an infidel so if it is true that we handed over this home to god where is our bread for today someone you need to take your eyes away from your company from the government i'm not a politician but in africa and all over the world we blame everything on those in power we blame everything on those members of parliament anything that goes wrong both the one that is our responsibility and the one that is not our responsibility there are things only god can do give us this day ah, like a child will run and say mommy i'm hungry and the mother is proud to be mother follow me she says let's get to the kitchen and let me see. you will see what i've done and there are options what do you want there's this there's that there's that and the child is proud of such a you know these adverts that they show you see this blue band adverts or whatever have you seen that kind of thing and you see the children even though they are acting you look at it and you're just salivating and you you walk you walk to a shop or a mall and you're ready to buy the same thing Do you believe, listen to me, do you believe God is a giver? Yes. Do you believe he can bless you daily? Yes. Now please, I'm not promoting irresponsibility. We are very responsible people. And when we teach, we teach from a balanced perspective. Because if you just teach believers to just wait for God, another way, if you don't balance it, you will produce irresponsible citizens. This is what has made many young people to not be productive. They will not get jobs. They sit down and live in superstitious realities that keep punishing them and their wives and their children. This is not what I'm advocating. I am saying that as a believer, in addition to all you do, there is an advantage by reason of your being grafted into Christ. That it provides you a platform. Aside, you can hold your salary and you can hold God's provision. You will know the difference. Believe me. Let me speak to you in the name of honesty. How many of you know that based on the current African salary scale, if you are to build an enviable destiny, many, many jobs, as far as this country and Africa is concerned, not to insult and demean government or our entrepreneurs, they are doing their best, but by the scale of salary, you will not be able to do much in your lifetime. Please believe it early. You want to do ministry. Many of you here are pastors. My dear co-laborers in the kingdom. You will not be able to do ministry. And if all you are depending on entirely. Respectfully speaking. It's just the givings and what comes from the bowls, offerings. You know that sooner or later. There will be grievous tears that's a risk a big risk when i approach god i know that he's a giver and let me tell you how god gives <laughs> luke chapter 6 and verse 38 please don't forget this for the rest of your life give the bible says and it shall be given unto you Here's how God gives. Ready? Read with me. Good measure. Uh huh. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall. Hold on. So, the way God gives is that He goes around the earth and He looks for men that He coordinates to your life. That's how God gives. And can I tell you something? Are you aware that the population of men is increasing on earth? That may be bad for the climate, but it's good for your giving. Because that means there are enough actors. If you refuse to give, God can use another person too. Shall men give? 
he talks to you and you argue it takes one year imagine if god now tells this man and says give give joshua selman say a hundred thousand if it takes you one year to obey god wouldn't i suffer god god gave the instruction in january you obeyed december what now happens to me <laughs> So while you are arguing and disobeying, he will find another human. Please, someone believe that God, there are enough men to be used by God to bless you. Listen, when you know this, you stop becoming angry at individuals. Don't put pressure on your uncle. He's only one of 7.2 billion people that are available to be used. Listen. Save yourself the heart attack of blackmailing people and allow and and making people feel bad for being successful. We do that a lot in Nigeria. Once somebody rises from a family, he's almost he will keep quiet for many years. Sometimes it's until he's about to die before you know he's that successful. Because everybody comes and you now say, I prayed for you. I mean, if you pray this intercession, it's you and God. God is the one who rewards you. But why put pressure on individuals like that? But if you know that God, see, let me tell you, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you can be here in Abuja or anywhere, whereas your answer will come from Israel. Someone will come and say, I don't know you. Ah. The next time someone tells you something, told me, say, aha, uh -huh, the giver is at work. The giver is at work. Moving men. Moving systems. The giver is at work. Please believe what I'm telling you. The giver is at work. Someone wants to shut down my company. The giver. The giver. I approach you. Daily bread. Daily bread. The urgency in this family. One month may not meet us alive. Where is the giver? Government cannot guarantee giving you daily. Your boss cannot guarantee giving you daily. I bring you good news. Abba is sufficient enough to provide for your daily bread. Listen now. Give us this day. When God was going to send me to this city, you know what it means to come to Abuja from Zaria? You are intelligent, think well. If God does not send you, you will not only disgrace yourself, you will be a memorial, you will be a lesson for people, you, you will be a portrait of what disobedience looks like. They will use you in Bible schools to teach people, parents will use you to caution their children People in politics will use you to warn, to show people how painful it is to disobey God. Hallelujah. But when I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Hear me. I want you to leave tonight's service with a sense of confidence. Look at men as if they owe you. Look at them as if you are wondering. You mean he has not spoken to you yet? I, I expect you to be one of the actors. I don't mean talk to them and harass them. Exodus chapter 3 and 21. Let me finish that part so we move quickly. We have a few minutes and we're done. Exodus 3, 21. This is how God gives. Please read it. You're a Christian. Ready? One to read. And I will give these people. Hold on. Who will give? Who will give? God. And I will give. But this is how I will give. In the sight of the Egyptians, I will give you by placing something on your life called favor listen listen and the character of that favor 
is that even if you, it is Egyptians I need to use, when favor is on you, it's like a spell. Even Egyptians that have oppressed you for 430 years, if your favor only works for family members, it's not authentic favor. Please give us that scripture. Exodus 3, 21. It shall come to pass. This is the proof I have given to you. That when you go, hallelujah, you shall not go empty. You shall not go empty. You shall not go empty. I know you lost your wallet, but don't kill yourself. Ah, my life is finished. How much is there? Don't kill yourself like that. The Savior is in your heart. A little box with maybe a few dollars or something just fell and you, you are giving yourself heart attack. Every time you wake up in the morning and you see that there are still men, rejoice. I'm transferring in you a very powerful mentality. It's not a mentality of irresponsibility. It's a superior advantage we have in this kingdom. Man of God, let me tell you this. Don't be writing letters to people and say, till now, God has not spoken to you. Don't harass anybody. They didn't call you. Let me tell you something. From where, hold on please guys. From where you are, if you dare wake up in the morning and hear the sound of cars moving and see people moving, rejoice. There are enough men. The giver, he can play men like chess from heaven. You move forward. Move forward. Go to him. They don't have to know you. Strangers shall feed your flock. Is it not in your Bible? These are my convictions. Believe me, we are not just shouting for nothing. If you don't believe what I'm teaching you, sooner or later life will so whip you. Because you will see how limited your platforms are. Man is how God gives. He uses men. 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 So he can sit down and speak to you and say, This family, I'm instructing you that they never beg for bread again. Listen. And you come to that family and say, God sent me here. How many of you are working in this family? Well, only two of us. How many of you are graduates? All of us. Why is that so? Anyway, God has instructed me to come. It is God that gives, but he uses men. Take away superstition around giving. Giving comes through men. What God gives you is he gives you the capital that buys money. It's called true riches. In one of our sessions on finances, I hope God will grant us grace to deal with it. If all you have is money, you are in trouble. Because there is a realm you get to where everybody around you is rich. What then do you have? Money itself is a product. There is what buys it. The same way money can buy a bottle of drink, there is something that also buy, buys money. The name of the capital that buys money is called true riches. You are only wealthy when you have true riches. Someone can dash you money and it will finish. But not when you have true riches. One of them, there are seven of them that God gives men. But only one of them I will share with us tonight is called favor. Favor is true riches. It is the capital that buys money. Maybe I should add one more. Should I add one more? The second of the two riches is called relationships. Everything money can buy, relationships can pay for too. In the multitude of men, the Bible says, is a king's honor. If all you have is just access to financial resources without men, you will not do much. Not everything opens to finances. There are things that only open to the ministry of men. The Lord gave the word and great was the company of them that published it. Are we blessed? 
next verse Matthew 6 media help us Matthew chapter 6 again now I believe verse 11 this is a very serious one preparing to round up and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors now please let me have your attention Jesus gets to a very sensitive part of his prayer he's talking of forgiveness please keep the scripture there for a while forgive us our wrongs or our debts he didn't stop there he says as we forgive those who sin against us some versions will say there are many revelations about this sensitive aspect of prayer and if we do not learn this we may not be able to excel in our prayer lives a few thoughts on this please follow me number one all men are human they fail and they grow weary this is the revelation Jesus is giving forgive us our debts as we also are debtors to others he's planting in his disciples a revelation that you are in the world of men that the best of all men are still men husband wife business partners all kinds of people somewhere in your journey in life you will have to find an occasion where you will need to communicate forgiveness are we together forgive us our debts he would have stopped there but he says there's something i need to let you to know as we ourselves forgive our debtors it's a chain reaction this is the one area where everybody is involved both the one praying those listening he's saying forgive us our debts that means as you live in this world this is not just a prayer issue now it's a revelation live with the consciousness that all men are human let the propensity for forgiveness be ever there in your heart ready to communicate it because you will find many men and the higher you rise the more there will be need to communicate this listen living a life without forgiveness will be a life of sorrow eventually you will find out that you'll be the only one standing the chances that everybody around your life will offend you one day is 100 percent the chances that you will offend everybody around your life is 100% regardless your spiritual growth. You read about Jesus who carried a whip. Is it in your Bible? That one day Jesus entered a temple. He didn't report the rebellious people to the Roman government as a nice coordinated citizen would do. He carried the whip and took laws in his hands. Whip all the people, turned the table of the exchangers and was breathing hard and said, my house should be called the house of prayer if you were in government ladies and gentlemen and a report reaches you that jesus just just did something like this what would you do now jesus i love you but why have you tied my hand now that's what happened to king Nebuchadnezzar. when they gave a decree they said no prayer should happen to any god for a period of 30 days daniel went to pray he didn't do wrong but he offended the laws of the land. Offending people has nothing to do with being evil. It's a difference in perspective. Difference in values. You may have an, maybe a Muslim driver. And one day you quickly want to pick something in the bank. And you come out and you see the person praying. And he acts as if you didn't employ him. He doesn't even pay attention to you until he's done with his prayer. And you, while he's praying, you are just thinking and wondering, how do I punish this man? Do I drive him? Do I jail him? And yet he's, he's a very sincere man. A man only honoring his conviction. Forgive us our sins. Forgiveness is painful. That's why Jesus took out time to talk. Forgiveness is an aspect of giving i hope you know don't give money alone forgiveness is giving you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me 
suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and now exalted. I really want to worship you, my God. You have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. Save your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you. businessman you will need it you are a leader you will need it you are a father you will need it how many hired servants the prodigal son said does my father have and I am here sitting with the swine I may not know many things about my father I've been with the swine a long time but there is something I know about him that he is rich in mercy therefore I will arrive and I will go to my father and I will say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your slaves. As soon as the father saw him afar off, the Bible says the father came and embraced him. You are messed up, but you are still my son. Listen to me. Sooner or later in your life, if it's not already happening to you right now you're going to get to a point in your life where you will need to communicate forgiveness cheated in business backstabbed politically betrayed in ministry taken advantage of this is the world of men Jesus is teaching us if I ask everybody to come, to come and pick this mic and tell us the story behind your resentment for men. Some of you concluded that all men are wicked and evil and devilish. I don't need any man. No. Take it easy. God still uses men. Some of you is preachers you hate. When you see any man on stage, you curse him before you even know him. That's how they stole our money that year. Exactly. And the man can preach just like him. That's, that's exactly. <laughs> Listen to me. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. I bring you the word of the Lord. It is important for you maintain. Don't just receive forgiveness. Jesus was teaching here. He said, I am willing. The father is willing to communicate forgiveness. But you must have this revelation forever for as long as you are alive can i even tell you something your forgiveness will need to graduate into forbearance let me tell you the difference between forgiveness and forbearance forgiveness happens because of the limitations of men mistakes limitations ignorance foolishness forbearance means that that weakness still remains in the person and you will have to live with it forever that means it will be repeated again this should be taught have you prayed for your son and you called him and said why are you living like this why are you a bad boy and he says daddy i will never do it again by evening police is calling you e evening not the next day don't feel bad please if you have someone that's why they are here we'll pray for them six o'clock are you the owner of this child yes sir please come to the we are tired if this boy if he comes here they will jail him and you are standing there say i thought this guy just begged at that point you don't need forgiveness again you need forbearance he's a prodigal son but he's still my son something happened and i'm only going to say it because archbishop benson either hosa is gone and then you know years ago this was from duncan williams himself he he said how that 
I think it was Oral Robert, I don't know, who came to Ghana and had a meeting. And while they were reporting the meeting, they made mistakes and they credited some of the churches that belonged to Bishop Duncan Williams to Oral Robert. And when he heard it, he said, no, he just tried to correct them sharply. And then when the report got to Oral Robert, he said, no, 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 why should this guy be doing this? And then he called on Archbishop Benz in Izahosa and said, why is your son behaving like this? I mean, you taught this guy well, he should behave well. And then Bishop Benson Idahosa called him as a son to rebuke him. And he said, I will not come. Duncan Williams, in his own words, leave me alone, I will not come. You are not God. And he said, all right, from today, you are on your own. It didn't take two years. Everything was pursuing him, from government to demons to but principalities nature men everything i mean it he got to a point where he prayed he fasted no matter what you do if it's in disobedience you will have to go back to the protocol of god's ordinance you're not going to quietly manipulate god in the secret place when you are living largely no it doesn't work that way the prodigal son can ask for forgiveness while he's with the swine but for restoration he must still meet his father listen carefully and then he now called and it was difficult to now reach pension leader Musa. his life had been so shattered he was a shadow of himself and then he heard that archbishop benson idahosa was in london and he booked a flight quickly when he got there he lay down flat on the ground and held his legs and said no matter what happens you are still my father and he said look what has happened to my life and he said bishop benson idahosa just looked at him and after a while took him a deep breath and here's all he said satan this is the business between me and my son The legal access you have it is me he has offended leave two of us together you can now go you will need to obtain forgiveness many times in your lifetime you will need to give forgiveness listen to me there are people here who is as though you would rather die than to forgive your wife or your husband or your children no this child wasted my school fees I, I wasted money paying school fees i didn't eat well i paid school fees and look the kind of result he brought let me tell you this one of the most powerful words for me in the bible is the word again again is a powerful word is the clearest description of hope and adam knew his wife again the prodigal son again the lord is speaking to you here you under the sound of my voice piling up a list of people for as long as you pin people down you too you will remain down you cannot rise when you are pinning others down apostle you don't know what they did to me apostle forgive us our trespasses there are pastors today who hate others talk about others tear down others i, I don't care whether you are right or wrong it says forgive us as we forgive when it has to do with offense he's saying everybody's in the same basket it's often said that if you point one finger at someone is it two or three now i don't know how many a number of your fingers are pointing back at you that is so true in fact ethically some of you here are hr specialists your consultants and i think there is a conflict management principle that hr people teach that if you want to report someone who is a staff in a company before you say one thing that is wrong against that person you must say three things you like that means if you are coming to meet the HR or the boss, before you say this person, you are bad or he's a thief, 
if you cannot tell your boss three things about the person that is positive he will send you away he will say complain the day you show me three other things that are good about the person and they found out that it has improved the working relationship of many people within the company because by the time you're researching and finding the things that are good you will just see how minute that issue is and you say i forgive you Use it for your company from tomorrow. Call them and tell them I learned something. All of you come together. No more complain on this ratio. Three to one. Where sin abound, much more grace abound. So use that as a scriptural backing. <laughs> Maintain an allowance for the humanity of men. As you live in this world take away the godlike expectation that you have over men leave home I remember one time someone called me I, I, I got up I think around maybe two or three I don't do much of sleep in the night and I saw a text that was full of all kinds of things you claim you're a man of God I've been calling you I was so tired I was sleeping you know? this person insulted me and said this i'm calling you to pray if my loved one dies just know you killed my loved one what is this now i only slept they say you pray in the night yes it's true but that day i was tired should i lie i only i slept listen it's good to expect so much but you must have realistic know the difference between realistic and unrealistic expectations are we together there are people today who get angry at politicians i gave you 50 names to give all of them a job you only gave five what kind of person are you ah he says i've tried my best you are not the only one didn't i vote for you your vote is only one be patient <laughs> what of business people you must have a large heart please listen to me the humanity of men is something you must factor in your heart otherwise you will have heart attack every day of your life every day every day I'm wrapping up let me give you a story when I started ministry I was so passionate about being in the good books of everybody I'm a peace loving person I don't like trouble as you see me like this if it takes me sleeping on the ground here for peace to reign I will do it peacefully and quietly people took advantage of me people will sleep they will wake up stretch themselves and now try to call me if I'm not available they'll say you said God God told you God sent you to us I will feel so blackmailed I was almost I was drained let me tell you how God delivered me I entered a Catholic Church and I looked at the crucifix you know the, the cross that they put there and the Holy Spirit said whose face is there this is true for the first time I realized I was not the one who died for the sins of people <laughs> honestly honestly it just occurred to me that you can never truly satisfy everybody's needs the goal is to be sincere and to do your best with the grace that God has given you because the time it takes to appease another is the same time that allows to offend another can you come to my house okay i'm coming ah you went to this house what of my own okay don't worry i will see what i can do i would i would receive over five invitations for the same date and they will forget to contact me and then remind me sometimes the morning of that meeting i hope you are still coming our posters are out and i'm saying god what am i doing now and for some of them the journey there's no airport there and then we're just starting the resources to have the luxury to travel is not even there Can you forgive I went to preach somewhere when I started out in ministry it was raining I went through the rain Do you know when I got to the church they didn't keep a seat for me I was a preacher <laughs> yes sir 
they were acting drama laughing around jumping and playing i fasted i prepared a very serious sermon i came to pray for people with all my heart and here's what these people are doing i stood at the door they put umbrella and then eventually they had to push some people please move move that's how they got the seat for me and then they acted drama for over one hour plus they were laughing i said what is going on here why did i accept this invitation i'm not saying drama is wrong and then when i got up i had not even raised one song of worship they just brought a paper and passed a sorry time has gone and you know security uh can i just maybe 15 minutes or so i said oh, no no come on in the end of it i still was happy i said lord i'm not going to allow offense or bitterness destroy and corrupt someone came here hungry to receive let me tell you this one of the secrets of the anointing is not prayer and fasting it's love and compassion it's not enough to just want power you must have a high level of forbearance some of the nastiest people in your life may be some of the most sincere people too they are just people who do not know how to manage the emotions around their lives you must obtain grace to forgive there are some of you who need to forgive maybe your house helps you are already planning that this week you are going to jail them take it easy take it easy give them a chance again when i learned this in ministry it gave me peace there is absolutely nothing that surprises me today in ministry now my heart is prepared for anything anything As I'm here, if I hear that the security people in my house have run away with my car, I'll say, okay, no problem. That's all right. God, thank you. It's your own police. I hand over the case to you. If you find the car, good. If you don't find it, that's all right. Please, I need peace in my life. Make up your mind that you are going to have peace. Let me tell you this. Do you know the highest index for measuring wealth is peace? Not progress. Peace. There are many people today the names of people is what makes your blood pressure to be running up and down you want to sleep you just remember oh this senator oh this person oh this business person can you imagine how this person betrayed me five billion gone like that it's gone but be patient god can restore but it's when you sleep and wake up he restores if you die they bury you make up your mind great peace have them that trust or love the lord he said in nothing listen make up your mind that you will have peace in your life nobody will see your peace is an asset don't trade it are we together peace i was told of someone who died from april fool true story this thing they do during april you know you just come and lies and and they said something serious and he died of a heart attack the person who was joking did not know what to do now <laughs> forgive as you are forgiven our time is up let me touch on one aspect just give me five minutes and we're done next it says lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil now this is a very powerful scripture lead us not into temptation that means men don't just get tempted they are led this is a very powerful information temptation does not just come to meet you there is someone or something that leads you and he said lord your leadership does not lead men into temptation lead us please keep the scripture there lead us not into temptation it's the day that armed robbers will come somewhere a voice will say go and rest there you are being led you just go and sit down there and get into trouble there are many people who were innocent but because they could not discern they went and fell into trouble 
you must pray for guidance not everything that looks good is good not every door that is opened is anointed in fact almost all troubles first appear as good lead us not into temptation is a very powerful prayer the guidance the leadership of the holy spirit isaiah chapter 30 you read from verse 21 and 23 please let's hurry up isaiah 30 21 and 23 the bible says isaiah 20 it says isaiah 20 isaiah 30 sorry 30 from verse 21 to 23 please write it down for reference isaiah 30 it says and thine ear shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left 22 the bible says oh dear let's just keep 21 go back to 21 i think i should just leave it there your ears shall hear a word from behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when you turn to the right and when you turn to the left in this world that we live in you need divine direction to be guided to go away from the place of temptation there are people who had no business getting into certain kinds of troubles but they were led there there are some of our children who had no business joining certain groups but they were led there they just got into the midst of people and they said okay we are this fraternity we are these occult groups there are many people today the destruction in your life started when you were led to join certain clubs certain groups the prayer to lead us not into temptation is a very powerful prayer lord anything that has trouble in the end save me from getting there lead us that means your will plays a role temptation does not come until there is something in you that resonates with that temptation are we together satan does not tempt you around anything in your life that does not truly desire if you are broke the temptation will be packaged around finances chances are that you will respond to it because you are hungry remember jesus the temptation the first temptation had to do with hunger you are hungry why don't you turn this stone to bread listen don't just pray for your needs alone pray that god will give you the stamina not to fall into temptations that come around your need you may be needing a house in abuja desperately your family members are stranded and satan comes why don't you compromise and you will get one million overnight for a house it's easy to resist temptation when you don't have a need satan is not foolish he will wait till you have a need and the need presses you to the neck then he comes with an offer it's difficult to say no when you have a need lead us not into temptation and then he says deliver us from evil now this one evil you don't have to go there evil is a is a living spirit it moves around looking for men you know a man of god a man of god gave a story very very touching story about a man who tried to board a flight and he was rushing there and for whatever reason you know it was close before he got there the flight lifted a few minutes later he would hear from the news maybe an hour later or so that the flight crashed he was saying wow then he went to join a train and the train crashed that one and he died in the train you see that one death was looking for him death was intentional if you if you miss the air i'm still waiting for you on land let me tell you this two scriptures please very quickly two scriptures first john 5 19 first john 5 19 never forget this scripture first john 5 19 the bible says we know that we are of god and the whole world not abuja not nigeria not africa the whole world lieth in wickedness every one of us here is a potential victim of wickedness if unassisted by god everyone you don't have to offend anyone just be alive 
even the dead body of Moses when Moses died was he free Satan still came to carry remember he wanted the dead body when Jesus died was he free they still put people to cover the body what do you do with a dead body they covered it in a tomb and they still put people to protect the body last scripture for tonight second peter chapter 2 and verse 9 second peter chapter 2 and verse 9 i say amen to this before we even read it amen. the lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished the key word or the key phrase is the lord knoweth how to <laughs> god knows a woman knows how to make jollof rice god knows how to deliver you and knows how to push the enemy to the place where he knows that there is a god in heaven god is a deliverer deliver us from evil it's a prayer you need to pray sincerely deliver my family from evil deliver my ministry from evil deliver my business from evil This is Jesus teaching us how to pray. That this must be the construction of our approach to prayer. These are the details that must be captured in prayer that prevails. Please listen to me believers who are wrapping up. The Lord is teaching us this because he wants our prayer life to be rich. That when next you go to pray, whether you are praying in the spirit, whether you are praying in understanding, you must approach it with this body of thought with this mindset i am coming to my father i have the faith to approach him i approach him with the spirit of reverence my priority is that the kingdom come i know he's a giver he gives me daily by supplying favor and using the ministry of men so every time you are praying god open a door you are not just playing a blind prayer father doors must be open doors, no you know how the doors are open you are no longer in confusion if i ask you now how do doors open you shouldn't be confused it is through men so when i'm saying lord open doors invariably i'm saying send destiny help us i'm no longer praying a careless prayer i'm not shadow boxing i know send me divine connectors send me men of influence send me gifted people send me burden bearers if god wants to lift me how does he lift me he uses men so give me the wisdom to maintain strategic relationships oh god now your prayer life is fruitful just pray randomly god don't leave me like this change my story wipe my tears it may be a sincere prayer but i'm telling you you will not be able to maximize that prayer because intelligence is not captured in that prayer now if god comes and speaks prophetically in the name of jesus by this week you are returning with a testimony while you are saying amen you are not just saying a blind amen there are revelations that support your receiving what are the revelations favor is upon my life that favor will make men to come to me that favor will orchestrate events that is the basis of your saying amen the devil will not plant doubt now you know why you are saying amen now you give the holy spirit room to be able to walk that word are we together every closed door be open now you are saying amen you know why you are saying amen because there is the power of the holy spirit that can swing open doors in the spirit are you ready to pray you're not going to stand please sit we'll pray for just one minute and then i do the altar call and we're done please whilst you're praying you're seated i'd like you to lift your voice in one minute and say father change my perspective as far as the ministry of prayer is concerned i am a king and i am a priest i want to begin to pray the kind of prayer that produces results please take your voice and pray you came to church outside are you praying 
Shina skila paharu sekete brande geda basia. Lekete branda skoto braski lehesheli ata branda zida basuda. The mystery of prevailing prayer. Lord, I desire my prayer life to be full, to be rich. I approach you as Abba, my source. No fear, sustainer, defender. I come to you by faith, full of reverence. I come to you asking that your kingdom find expression in my life. Let your will be done in my home, my ministry, my office. You are a giver. Send me my daily bread. I have shortchanged myself. I have lived for 30 years, 40 years, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years. I didn't know you give daily. I thought you only give once per year. Now I release my faith. Oh, giver of all good things. What do you have in store for me today? What do you have in store for my family today? Give me my daily bread. Forgive me my trespasses. I obtain grace to forgive those who trespass against me. I live with the awareness that this is the world of men. Lead me not into temptation, O God. Deliver me from evil. are wrapping up then the prayer he taught ends with this for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Keep praying. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. request that we all rise let's minimize movement everywhere all the overflows outside following online please stand please stand please stand I want to make the altar call it never tires me to give people an opportunity to run to Jesus the church is like a hospital the hospital has several departments and several compartments there is a place called intensive care unit where you treat patients whose situation is a matter of life and death please look up no matter what it is that you have and you know if jesus is not lord of your life you are truly not saved he says what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and to lose his soul week in week out we have thousands of people streaming in coming here following online from all across the continent it's our assignment to give people room to truly come and make bold declarations for jesus you are here under the sound of my voice in this main auditorium and then outside you're saying apostle i love jesus but I'm yet to make a genuine decision. For some of you, you probably have made the decision and your life just went haywire. And you're saying, I need Jesus right now. 
we have just two minutes for you wherever you are whilst we clap and encourage you please very quickly run from your seat and i want you to come and stand here run and come and stand here run like there's fire on the mountain come like you truly mean business with jesus don't be ashamed don't say we came in group uh -uh. this is a personal affair koinonia is this the best you can do for them celebrate them as they come scripture says he must be born again he must be born again keep coming win that war tonight jesus is giving you an opportunity to make it right is this all i still believe there are a few more people all those in the overflows just move to your projector stand all the overflows right down to the basement and then outside move to your projector stand and you who are following from your home your office your device wherever i want you to connect i'm about to lead them in this prayer make sure you participate in the prayer god bless you thank you thank you for being bold thank you for not being ashamed of jesus hallelujah if you're joining them please quickly come quickly come ladies and gentlemen thank you thank you for the boldness it takes a lot of boldness to come and stand before jesus and before his people but can i tell you this this is the noblest and the wisest decision any man can make in his lifetime the decision to hand over everything to jesus in exchange for his life the bible says as many as will come to him he will in no wise cast away it doesn't matter how you have been how you have lived what went right or wrong he's able to give you a new beginning lift your right hand and pray this prayer from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem jesus is here say after me very loud say it very clear say lord jesus i love you with all my heart and i believe that you are the son of god tonight i make you my lord my savior my king i obtain forgiveness of sin i receive your life i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign from tonight and forever i am a child of god amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for this once it's always an honor to present to you precious souls men and women who jesus died for lord i pray according to the authority of scripture i declare their sins forgiven i declare that you give them a new beginning even by your spirit the power of satan the power of sin the grave is broken over your life from today i declare that you are commended to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit the lord himself will build you to be mighty in the spirit you go from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development Lord, grant me the discipline.